Welcome back to Zenith Poker. Today we'll be starting a series on two bet pots between the button and the big blind. So in this video, this starting video, we'll be looking at the preflop as an overview. And we'll be looking at the different preflop sizes and the preflop ranges that are response to that. And we'll tie that into how we might continue postflop. So the button opens this range for a few different sizes. We've got a 50% pot raise, so 2.25, a 60% pot raise, so 2.5, a 70% pot raise, so 2.75. The other sizes aren't used quite as frequently, so the min raise isn't used super often, the 3x isn't used super often. It's more around this sort of 2.5 size, maybe a little bit smaller. In general, the open size is going to be more polar the bigger the open size actually is, so the range is going to be more polar. So if you notice that this ace 8 offsuit doesn't really have too much in the way of opening to the 2.75 size and it more slightly favors the 2.25 size and then in contrast the ace king offsuit favors slightly more a slightly larger size 2.75 and 2.5 being favored ace king suited favors a sort of middling size towards a little bit small the low pocket pairs favor something towards the middle of a suited king favors something a little bit on the small side and then the hands that are very much towards the edge of the range so stuff like 10 4 9 5 10 5 these hands can actually open slightly bigger so the hands towards the middle of the range will go slightly smaller and then the hands towards the top and the bottom will go slightly larger on average and this is the effect of the polarity in the pre -flop, in the preflop range so it's not just necessary to know how to respond to a single open size is necessary to respond how to respond correctly to multiple open sizes because those different open sizes will have different polarities and if you're using multiple open sizes yourself which i suggest most people should in the button the different sizes will allow you to construct good plays post flop and in terms of exploitation and close to gto plays so with some certain hands you will slightly prefer going a bit smaller, such as Jack-8, Queen-8, Ace-8 offsuit, and then certain hands you prefer slightly going a little bit bigger, 10-4 suited, the 10-8 offsuit, um, Ace-King offsuit fairly obviously. So certain pocket pairs will tend to mix in between all the sizes. All right, that being said, let's have a look at the 2.5 open size, which is the most prevalent, but we'll look at the other sizes as well. So the 2.5 open size and the response in the small blind, so the small blind responds with that three betting range but we're not really looking at that we're looking at the big blinds calling range here so the big blind will be calling this preflop open with a lot of suited hands suited and connected hands the opening the opening range doesn't really contain these suited and connected hands towards the bottom but the big blind will, res will respond by defending these hands preflop so there is some benefit to the big blind doing this in that on certain low boards the big blind will be favored Although on those particular boards, the buttons range will have plenty of overcard hands, which have a decent amount of equity to outdraw any sort of pair. So the one pair hands can be outdrawn by an overcard, but the two pair hands and sets, which the big blind will potentially be making with these two hands towards the bottom right, will favor the big blind, and the big blind may even consider donking some of those boards at some frequency. On the high card, side of the spectrum if you notice the big blind actually will three bet a lot of the big pocket pairs so we're talking all the pocket nines through aces is being three bet a little bit of the pocket eights the big blind also will be three betting all of the ace king and all of the ace queen all of the ace jack suit and all of the king queen suited so that you can think of as the value component of the big blinds three bet range all of that is being three bet the nut sort of bluff or semi bluff is 10 9 suited, blocking both pocket 10s and pocket 9s in the buttons calling range to that 3 bet. So we'll look at that quickly. The 3 bet here, 10s and 9s always will continue. 10s is the 10s and 9s are the top of the calling range. So blocking the top of the calling range is pretty nice. In addition, 10 9 suited also blocks all these sort of 10s and all these sort of 9s, which is a significant portion of the calling range. So having both a 10 and a 9 will double block a lot of hands that continue in the buttons range. So there isn't any 10-9 suited, but there is a fair amount of 10-9 offsuit. So just because there isn't the suited combo doesn't mean that the offsuit combo is absent from the range. 
The big blind will also defend these offsuit suited, sorry, offsuit connected cards. So the 9A offsuit, 8-7 offsuit, 7-6 offsuit, and 6-5 offsuit. So the big blind can make a fair amount of straights given those offsuit combinations. The big blind 3-bets are all the suited combinations of those hands. On the straight completion, it'll be an offsuit hand most frequently rather than a suited hand that completes the straight with a connected connected hand. The big blind doesn't defend that many offsuit aces. So a lot of these offsuit aces are actually folded against a small size, against a two and a half size. Against a smaller size, those hands would be defended. All of the offsuit kings are being folded as well. These offsuit aces and offsuit kings are fairly easily dominated. So when the ace or the king actually comes, it's fairly easy to lose still because you get out kicked, particularly by the ace, king, ace, queen, ace, jack in the buns opening range, which the big blind won't have in the same sort of pot. So the big blind will be defending a lot of the post op plays with a small amount of sets and two pairs, which they get from a wide variety of these suited hands pre-plop. Hands like queen five, jack three, eight six, these hands can make a sneaky two pairs, which the bun is more difficult to, to have, right? The bun, they do have stuff like the queen five, they stuff like the eight, eight six, but it's a little bit less prevalent in, in, in this particular opening range. The big blind will be continuing with hands like jack three, queen two, six three, four three. So the amount of two pairs in terms of absolute combinations will be roughly the same, but the overall density will be slightly different. If you notice that the button here is opening about 45% of the range. So if the button opens that sort of density, and the big blind only calls 32%. So when the big blind actually flops a two pair holding with any of these two combos, it'll be slightly higher in terms of relative density in the range. Hopefully that makes sense. These four combos of queen five suited, for example, is a greater proportion of the range that defends than in the big blind than the 45% that opens. So four combos divided by the 32%, is a bigger number than the four combos divided by the 45% that opens. So these two pair combos with these sort of suited hands is slightly higher density in the big blinds range. Of course, the big blind can't make two pairs with certain combos. So they can't make two pair with ace, king, ace, queen. They have difficulty making two pairs with ace, jack, or king, queen. They'll have difficulty making two pairs with soft 10, 9, jack, 10, because a lot of that will three bet pre flop. But they'll make a fair amount of top and bottom two pair combos or bottom two pair combos. Now, let's have a look at the smaller size. If you open it a little bit smaller here, 2.25, and the small blind folds, you notice that the big blind is three betting roughly the same range for value. So nines plus, ace queen, ace jack suited, king queen suited is the value range. The 10 nine suited is being three bet a lot of the time. The, ten, the, the nine suited being three bet a lot of the time for the reasons that we discussed. So the three bet range is very similar and the three bet size is also very similar. So the three bet size against a smaller open is going to be 13.5 or 12.25, somewhere in between those, but most frequently this 13.5. And that was the same as against the two, two and a half. So slightly smaller open size gives you roughly the same three bet size. And similarly, if we look at the slightly bigger open, the response is mostly around this 13.25. So you end up getting roughly the same three bit size for the three different opens around the equilibrium open size. So these three open sizes are most frequent because they're close to what you would consider optimal, near optimal, given the different polarity of the ranges. That isn't saying that there's only one open there was only one optimal open size. There's multiple open sizes in a distribution around this two and a half open. And all the three bit sizes of response will be roughly the same through bed size with only minor differences according to the open itself. So going back to the 2.25, what are the differences in the calling range? There's more of these suited hands towards the bottom. This stuff like 8-4 suited, 6-2 suited, which are suited three gaps. So it can make a straight in between, so they'll flop some gut shots. Uh, stuff like 10-5 to 10-2, 9-5 to 9-2. Sorry, 10-5 to 10-2 jack five to jack two these hands on certain boards the reason why these hands will continue over sort of nine 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 four to nine two is 
One, because the jack is simply stronger and jack and 10 is simply stronger than a nine. And secondly, on certain boards, the jack and the 10, so jack 10, sorry, jack five and 10 five suited or jack two and 10 two suited, they can actually flop double backdoor gut shots with boards like ace king two or something. So like ace, on a board like ace king two, your 10 five hand will have a backdoor flush draw at the bottom with a five. So a backdoor straight draw with the bottom at the five and a backdoor backdoor straight draw at the top with the 10 because the ace itself gives you both the wheel and the broadway. So there's the potential to have two backdoor straight draws with this particular type of hand. So yeah, that, that tiny bit of extra equity on those select boards nudges it over the edge compared to it being simply indifferent like this sort of 9.4 to 9.2 portion. Similarly, with the slightly bigger open size, the weaker offsuit aces are being folded. The offsuit kings are basically being folded without any straight draw potential. Now the offsuit connected cards, these hands are being continued all the time against a small open size. Let's have a look at the big open size, so the 2.75. Against the 2.75, we're getting more folds in this suited portion of the range, more folds of the offsuit aces, and more folds of the offsuit connectors. Still hands like King-9 offsuit are continuing, but we're getting certain folds with hands like the Queen-9 offsuit, Jack-9 offsuit, 10 8 offsuit, which continue at high frequency against slightly small open size. Now, we'll have a look at some responses to some very large opens or some non-GTO opens, and we'll also take a quick look at the open limp. So against a much bigger open, 3x is fairly common, so it's important to, to know that, memorize it. The response is fairly straightforward, I think. It's all of the suited and connected hands up to a, a two gap. So a single gap with a seven five, two gap with seven four, two gap down to five two. Four two is a very weak two gap. So four two and three two, even even though like they're more connected, quote unquote, they actually have the same number of straight draws as five two. So in terms of the ranking, five two is always stronger than three two. Uh, unless there's a particular reason you want to be able to flop two pairs with those hands. But usually, whenever 3-2 continues, 5-2 is always there beforehand. So 5-2 is a stronger hand. The offsuit aces are folding. These get, get too easily dominated. The weak offsuit aces, these offsuit connected hands are now all folding against the 3x open, which they continued at pretty high frequency against smaller open sizes. When we go a bit bigger, say to 4x, so a four big blind open, this is the big blinds continue it folds significantly and it's playing much closer to a three bit of fold size. The three bit sizes are starting to size up now, three betting to sort of 16 blinds, 14 to 16 blinds. The offsuit hands, even offsuit broadways are starting to let it go. A lot of the suited kings have gone. These suited connected hands, suited gapped hands are starting to let it go. The suited connectors are still always continuing and obviously any pocket pair is still always continuing. And then we get to something a little bit more ludicrous, such as the 5x open. Here, the small blind has basically decided to play three bit or fold. And now the big blind is getting very close to playing three bit or fold. The range is three betting to quite a large size now. We're getting up to between, here it's mixing between 12 to 18 big blinds, right? If there was something a little bit more, some more gradient, gradients in between, there might be some other sizes being used. Even hands like Ace King Offsuit, Pocket Queens can throw back to 20 blinds and be fairly happy with it. The through bets throughout range is still the same sort of hands for value, like Pocket Nines through Aces, Ace Queen, Ace Queen suited, a lot of the King Queen suited. And now there's a lot of hands being used as a semi bluff. The range of hands that calls is very tight, low pocket pairs starting to fold. Some of these hands like Pocket Fives or Pocket Eights are being through bet as a semi bluff. Ace check offsuit being through about as a semi bluff at high frequency. Ace and offsuit starting to fold. These suited broadways being through about as a semi bluff because there's not a lot that needs to continue against such a large open size. All right. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, if the button open limps, here is the small blinds raise over limp range. And this is the big blinds raise over limp range. You can see that the raise over limp range is still being sized very close to this 12 to 13 big blind area. And the value range is almost the same as against an open. And this construction of the raise over limp range is important to prevent strong hands from being indifferent between open limping 
and open raising, or at least make the EV of open raising a strong hand lower than that of open limping, because you're not going to be three betting them more frequently, or you're not going to be raising them more frequently. So a hand like pocket aces can't actually benefit in any way from opening as a limp. You're not actually going to try to raise of a limp much more frequently or for a much different size. So you're keeping the size roughly the same as you would against an open. So your raise of a limp size is very similar to your three bet size. So between this 12.25 and 13.5 being taken pretty often, potentially a touch smaller with some of these 11 big line raises. The raising range for value is roughly the same. So we've got pocket nines through aces, ace queen off suit, ace king off suit, ace king suited, ace queen suited, ace jack suited, king queen suited. A little bit more in terms of the ace jack offsuit, ace ten offsuit. Certain hands that do well at blocking the top of the potential continuing range, like the ten eight suited, jack nine suited, ten nine suited, nine eight suited, are being thrown in there as a semi bluff. And then you get some because you're facing a limp, you can choose which hands to raise or which hands to check. So you've got some additional variety of which hands you can use as a semi bluff. Stuff like king two suited being thrown in there, king six suited, ten four suited, four two suited, ace three offsuit being thrown at low frequencies. So a lot more variety, but the range that, that bluffs as a raise of a limp will be wanting to have a decent amount of equity still going post-flop. So you do have want to have some kind of some kind of potential straight draw. It's like a hand like 10 6, 9 6, 5 3, 4 2. These are weak straight draws. King 6, weak King X, but the 6 has plenty of straight potential and ends up dominating Ace X on the 5 4 3 2 board. Notice that the queen jack offsuit, queen jack suited, king jack offsuit, king jack suited aren't being raised at a very high frequency or at all against a limp. So this will be the top of the checking range here. And these hands will flop a top pair strong kicker. And in a limp pot, top pair strong kicker is very strong. And we were wanting to go for value as a check raise all the time. The limping range is it's going to be fairly tight. It should be roughly the same, should be roughly the same width as the opening range. And so you'll end up with a, essentially a 90% checking range or basically 100% range less the open, sorry, less the raise of a limp. And uh, you'll be essentially checking everything to the open limper who will basically bet their entire range. And so with a hand like King Queen offsuit, King Jack offsuit, Jack Queen Jack offsuit, these hands can basically check raise for value when flopping the top pair. All right. So that was a bit of an overview of the button and big blind preflop ranges. In the remainder of this course, we'll be looking at post-flop post -flop play between the button. We'll be looking mostly at this 2.5 open size and the big blinds response because that's the most common size that's being taken in a lot of games at the moment. But in addition to that, we also have some simulations for the 2.25 open size as well, which is another common open size that people like to use. So we won't be discussing that as, as much in detail in this course, but you will have those simulations available to download. So in your own time, you can look at those and see what the similarities and differences are between the 2.5 open size. The general strategies will be very similar in both situations. All right. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you enjoy the rest of this course. Bye now.